In this video, I will be telling you guys how you can make your mixing sound better using side chaining and also why you want to side chain. Hey guys, what's up? Forever Bounty, welcome to part 3 of my 3 part mixing tutorial. In this video, I will be telling you guys how you can make your mixing sound better using side chaining and also why you want to side chain or maybe why you even don't want to side chain. Now, this part builds up upon material that I used in other parts. For instance, in part 1 I talked about how you can cut away unwanted frequencies and in part 2 I'm talking about how you can make your mixing sound better using volume and panning. I highly suggest you check those parts out if you haven't checked them out already. I will put a link in the description so that you can easily check them out. And another thing I want to point out is that I'm using Fruity Loops 12. If you are interested in this Fruity Loops as well or you want to know more about it, just go into the link in the description as well. However, you have to know that all the techniques I be teaching you guys or all the ideas I be teaching you guys, they can be used within any DAW. It will be like a little bit different because any DAW is a little bit different but it comes down to the same basic rules and ideas basically. Now, with that being said, let's get into the mixing, right? Now, I have created for you guys a really simple loop over here, um, which I, I will just play and then you guys can instantly hear to really notice about like, listen closely to the kick, how this mixing is at this moment, how does the mix feel? And I want you guys to really look at that, okay? So I'm just gonna play it. Now, as you can hear instantly, like there's the mixing sounds pretty good, right? There's like a lot of bass, and there's this kick drum. You can hear the kick drum going, you know, in the mix. The higher parts of the kick drum, you can really clearly hear them. But I feel it's missing something. It's not really as tight and, con you know, the kick is not really present. And that's what I like the most. I want the kick to be present in the mix. That's what really drives the mix. That's what really makes it sounding great. So... What are we gonna do? We're gonna make the kick sound more present in the mix using the technique called side chaining. And basically what is side chaining is that you make room for the kick or you can use it for a clap or a snare or basically any instrument that ever you want, but you make room for that instrument to just pop out a little bit into the mix and then once the instrument is done playing, you make the rest of the instruments come there. So you just cut away a little bit of the mix and a little bit of the other sounds at that moment that it is playing. Now, you can of course, you know, try to cut away the frequencies, um, but that's not really doing it because if you want to have bass and you still want to have the kick to have bass as well. So if you cut away the bass, there's no bass and it's missing the warmth. If you're cutting away the bass from the kick, it's not really that pumping, it's not really that feeling that you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to use side chaining. I'll be using side chaining through a ghost kick. I will be showing you guys one way to side chain. There are actually multiple ways to side chain. So if there's another one that shows your favorite, then please use that one. But this is the way I sidechain normally. I really like it because I have a lot of freedom into using and to changing the sidechain in the way I want it. Also, that being said, let's just get into it. Now, to start off with, I have the kick over here and I'm just going to duplicate the kick by right clicking on it and choose clone. Now I'm going to put it into the next free mixer channel, which is 16 for me. I will go into a new pattern. Pattern number 15, right click again and choose fill each four steps. So we instantly have this melody over here. Now I'm just going to quickly rename the gig and call it Ghost as uh, this is called a Ghost Kick. So this is my Ghost Kick over here, it's in number 16. I'll just be dragging it over here into the playlist. I'm also going to change the name Ghost here. So it is really distinctive and I can instantly understand that this is my ghost kick. I really like to change it in the colors because that's really important for me. That's the way how I work. If you want to work differently, please feel free of course to do that. Now I'm going to change it here too to ghost. So I know that it is, this is the ghost channel, different color. There you go. So it, you know, it really pops out. Now what you need to see instantly is like, okay, we have this ghost kick, but why is it the ghost kick? That's because I'm going to use this kick to send out a channel 
at the same time the other kick is playing and I'm going to use this signal in the end to cut away a little bit of the other uh, sounds so that there's basically room for the kick to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into this mixer and I'm going to look at where is it going. And you have to look at down over here, that's where it's important. And you can see that there are multiple ways that this mixer is sending out signals to. Now it is actually sending out a signal to the master and then if we send a signal to the master, we hear it. We don't want that. So what are we going to do? We're just going to left click over here and there it's gone. No more signal to the master. But how are we going to use it now, you might be asking. We're going to use this over here and as you could see here, you can assign to if this channel sends a signal to another channel and to another channel or to the master. We're going to use this as well. We're going to go here. We're going to just right click on it and we're going to choose, you know, you can route to channel, route to channel only, but we're going to go for sidechain to this track. Don't use sidechain to this track only because you can only sidechain to one channel. Then we want to sidechain to multiple channels. So sidechain to this track. There you go. And now basically it's going to send a signal that's popping up here from playing this kick that's over here into this channel and then the, that signal will go to here. Now because we choose sidechain, you will not hear the sound. So on the sub right now, there is a sidechain. But it's not really sidechaining yet, it's only sending the signal. To use this signal, what we need to do is we need to go into the sub over here in the mixture channel. We're going to the lowest slot. We're going to choose for the limiter. And again, as I said, there are multiple ways we can do this, okay? I'm just showing one of the ways that I love to use it the most. So we have the fruity limiter over here. Now we go into compression, which is over here. And here we have this little box over here, which has sidechain. And this is very important because we want to put this to number one. Now we have only one sidechain going to the sub, so we only have number one. But if you have multiple sidechains going to the sub, because you can make this as crazy as you want, and many instruments that you want to sidechain to something, you have multiple numbers and you can just drag it up over here, but we only have one. So what it's doing now is it's taking the signal from the ghost, sending it to the sub, going into this compressor over here, and we're going to compress that in the way you like it. Now nothing is being compressed at the moment, so nothing will really change. But we're going to change that. Now the threshold over here is one of the most interesting knobs of that, that's actually in the compressor because it allows me to say like how hard or to how low do you want me to compress the sound and uh, the ratio over here actually says like how hard do you want it to be cut it's, it's kind of the same a little bit as the threshold but it's, it's not this more stands for like if I have one decibel it goes down two decibels and this is like what's the max that we can go to this is you know like the roof or in this case the bottom now, as if I put it around here, as you can see, we just move these knobs. It will already clearly have a distinctive sound inside chaining. So I'm just going to solo the, the sub. I'm just going to solo the side chain and you will hear instantly what I mean. You can see it over here. It's moving a little bit. Now, if it's not too clear yet, then I'm just going to pull it down more and more. Now it's sidechained really, really hard, as you can see. You can even see it here. Like the purple is where it cut it away. And then the white over here, basically what I'm outlining here, that's the, the, the waveform. Now there are different kinds of curves and waveforms that you can use, as you can see here. This is more, more tighter. It's really, really tight over here. So you can play around with it. I mostly keep it on curve number one. That's good enough for me. Now let's just up the threshold a little bit. And let's play the kick with it, alright? Because we want to hear the kick. Let me see if we can sidechain a little bit more. Now, that's already quite an... can actually hear it you know you can really hear that when I'm, I'm taking off the side chain that there is more space for the kick to play and we're not only gonna do this for the sub but we're actually gonna do this for all the different kinds of layers over here 
And let me just do that real quick and I will be right back. Okay guys, so I just quickly sidechain uh, to all the sounds, almost all the sounds. I only didn't really sidechain this high sound over here because it has this really distinct sound. It's not really in the way of the kick as well. So I didn't really want to sidechain it. You can of course always sidechain it a little bit just to make a little bit more room. As well like the, the FX over here and the little hi-hat over here, they're not sidechained. I think they're really cool the way they are right now. They're not really bothering me, but of course, feel free to sidechain whatever you want to sidechain. It can give really cool effects on whatever uh, you want to sidechain. And this is actually how it sounds after I just sidechain most of the sounds. So this is how it sounds right now. And as you can hear instantly, the kick has a lot more power. Um, you can pump this up even more if I change actually the EQ of the ghost kick. Because now it's standard, so then it will give a, a higher... You know, because I boost a few of the, the, the sounds here, it will give a higher signal, so now it will even sound... See, that's what I'm talking about. I, I missed that part uh, in the beginning. I'm sorry for that. But if you can see now, the ghost kick and the normal kick are EQ'd exactly the same. So this gives like the exact same signal that the kick gives are is given away now by the ghost as well. So that's being used to sidechain everything. And this is basically the way how I sidechain. Now, I know that there are a lot of different ways. So please experiment with them. I know there are a lot of things I have not covered yet. For instance, I've not really covered like how long does the side chain work or like how quickly does it have to go back up. There are all sorts of things that you can still learn about this. So check them out if you want. But this is really the basics that I wanted to give you guys on how you can make your mixing sound better. I don't really want to make this video a lot longer. If you guys like this, then don't forget to press that like button. Put a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I will catch you guys next time.